Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how to create a seamless checkout process. If you have an e-commerce site or if you're trying to sell you know, digital products, for example, the first thing I would say is if you're trying to get someone to check out, make it as simple as possible. I've seen checkout forms in the past where you, know, you have seven or eight steps, you have to register first to purchase. The more friction that you cause the more difficult it is to actually convert people. So I do recommend reading a book called Don't Make Me Think. It's a great book that will teach you not only around checkout pages, but just around uh, designing in general for users, um, both online and offline. Yeah, the the thing with checkout pages is everyone thinks that the least amount of friction you give people is going to create the most amount of sales. That's actually counterintuitive. Uh, it, It doesn't really work that way. The more you get people engaged, the more likely they are to finish the checkout process. Think of it this way. If someone does a two-step checkout process and they ask you to put in your name and email or email and password, and then they check out the items or buy your service or buy your product, whatever it may be on the second step, they're much more likely to complete because they already gave you some information along with the password or their email address. So in their eyes, they're like, well, you already have my email address, might as well continue. And by doing that and breaking up into two steps, you can also then email people who didn't complete their checkout and get those people to convert. Yeah. And then one thing I'll add from my side is if you want to make it, if you want to build more of a relationship with people, think about how you can integrate live chat into your your process as well. Let's say they reach your, your shopping cart page or let's say they abandon, for example, and they come back later. Well, guess what? You can use something like intercom and then message, talk to those people. Um, and speak to them specifically, right? And you can speak to their behavior a little bit too, based on you know what they've done. Uh, also, what you can do, I mean, this kind of goes without saying, but in, in you know in 2017, I'm I'm hoping that your page your pages are responsive. Uh, they're optimized for mobile because people do uh, convert on on mobile. Even though for me, the only time I actually convert on mobile is when I open up Amazon and I, I click the one click order. So that actually adds to another thing that that you can put on is you know how do you think think about how can you think about making a a seamless uh, one click checkout kind of experience with like Amazon does Um, because right now you know it just makes it so easy like literally the other week uh, I was with my parents and then I was like you guys need to get get more exercise because all they do is walk in the morning and I was like I'm going to buy you guys a uh, like a standing desk or like a I think it's called fit desk so it's like a it's a bicycle with a desk on top of it so they can put their their laptop on and literally all I did, I was eating with them. And then in like 20 seconds, I ordered the, the bike for them. And it was just, it just sprouted from a conversation. So if you can do something like that, it's going to make it a lot easier to convert. And it was like a $300 product. Yeah, but the one thing Eric mentioned is he did that from Amazon. Everyone knows what Amazon is. With your website, with your company, not everyone's going to have that brand and loyalty and trust that Amazon or Apple or one of those big guys have. For that reason, you can't just make everything seamless. It's not a bad idea to, assuming people truly understand what they're buying and what they're getting into. Doing stuff that's really seamless when people don't fully understand your product or service, it actually doesn't work. It only works when you have the trust and people really know what they're getting. And for that reason, don't just focus on getting people to the checkout page. Focus on first educating them helping them understand what product or service they're going to buy and why they they should be buying it and the results they can get or what other people have experienced reviews, etc. From there, then push those people to a checkout page because they're much more qualified and your conversion numbers will go up even though less people will be getting to your checkout page. Something else that I'll add is you want to keep the user informed as to where they are in the process. So let's say you have a four-step checkout sequence. Maybe at the top you have a sign-in section, then there's a delivery section, there's a payment section, and then you have different arrows saying, okay, here's here's the step that you're at, and you can go back and forth. Sometimes I don't see that, and I'm confused as to where I am. So you want to make it, again, you don't want people to think. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to understand uh, kind of where they're at. Sometimes when people use different shopping carts, sometimes it's a different experience. You want to make the experience consistent, right? We're talking uh, design-wise, and also we're talking speed-wise as well. 
Um, Speed, you know, from Amazon, actually, they they did a case study or there was a study done uh, by maybe somebody else, but saying, hey, for each millisecond that they lose, this is a couple million dollars. Um, so just, you know, obviously you're not Amazon, but, you know, if they're taking so much, they're putting so much weight on speed, you should be putting that much weight on speed as well. Yeah, and that's pretty much it on my end. I don't have much more. Um, as Eric mentioned, make sure it's mobile compatible, make sure it's fast, make sure people know what they're getting into before they reach the checkout page. And also make it really easy because some people shop around, make it easy for them to come back and start off where they left off. Great. And so one thing I want to add before we take off, uh, this week we are giving away five annual copies of Hrefs. You've heard Neil and I talk about this tool a lot. It's our favorite SEO tool, at least for me. All you need to do to enter is subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And make sure that you text marketing school, that's one word, to 33444. Once again, that's marketing school to 33444. And we will confirm the winners each week on the list. So Um, Again, if you guys want access, just do that, and we will see you in tomorrow's episode. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School. Marketing School.